coming back to this diagram, um, and you'll find there's now another line in there in nice pink or red or whatever that color is. Um, for communication between record companies, music publishers, and uh, um, author societies, um, or potentially also um, via some, some aggregators that may be involved there, and also um, DSPs. Um, and that is about um, talking um, about musical works. Just because an online retailer gets a, a sound recording from a record company, um, doesn't mean that they have a license from the owners of the uh, composition underpinning that sound recording that they can actually distribute um, and generate revenue from that um, sound recording. Um, therefore, we need to deal with licensing of sound recordings. Uh, that process, how those licenses are being, being acquired, um, differs quite significantly from territory to territory. Um, but the, the process by which, or, or with which we have, as of the last couple of years, mostly worked on is, is the, the one that is currently operating in the US, which, as things stand at the moment, is the one that is most, um, needs most manual intervention. So there was the most need for, for extending it. So what is the process that you're dealing with? Well, first of all, if you want to either create a, 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 digital, a, a product, a record company creates a product, or if an online retailer needs a license for a musical work, well, they need to out, first find out who owns shares in those musical works, because there may be five different writers, they may be signed to ten diff or five different uh, publishers, and then someone else may have bought a bit of that catalog and that has gone on. So you first of all need to find out who owns the shares in that musical work, then you can get a license for those shares. And then later on, if a catalogue is being transferred, the licensor needs to inform the licensee um, if, if something has changed, um, and that's the letter of direction process that you uh, referred to, to earlier. Um, so just, just to, to go, what is a share here? So if there's a work with two writers, um, they may have been 75, 25% being, um, being, being distributed. Um, they are then, um, the, the writers are, have, have uh, or are assigned to, to publisher companies, um, and that may then go through, through several uh, iterations, if you like, being, being sold and being catalog transferred, um, and maybe Sometimes you have sub-licensing agreements that something is only um, transferred in a specific uh, territory. So in this case, the publisher Q would own 75% or represent 75% of that work um, with respect of writer A um, for the UK only, whereas publisher P would have 75% um, in everywhere except the United Kingdom. And then you have, you have others, other situations where you have 60%, 40% of, of, of writer B's share of those originally 25% being, being uh, shared out between publishers R and T. Um, and then if publisher P even sells 50% of its XUK stuff to number R, and uh, 100% of the UK bit to, to R instead of uh, a Q, you end up with uh, quite, quite a complex uh, set of, of, of shares that you need to be able to communicate. That a record company who wants to create a, um, a, a, a physical product, or not necessarily a physical product, a product, needs to know in order to, 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 to determine to whom do I need to go to get, actually, a license. So... To license a share, you need to know who can license the share or collect the money for, for, for a share based on which original publisher, publisher share for each writer share. So you need to know a licensing share, collection share, original publisher share, and you need to know um, the manuscript share. Quite a lot of information just to be able to create a silver disk. 
So what do we do to find share owners? Well, we have the musical work share notification standard um, that has been in use um, for, for a couple of, well, for, for a year basically now. Um, and we're in the process of updating it um, as well. So you have the share request where a record company can go to individual publishers and saying, hey, why don't you, can you tell me, do you own this sound recording? or how much of the sound recording do you, do you own. Typically they do research first, try to find out who owns the stuff and then target it at specific publishers. Um, and they get a response saying, yep, I own 50% or no, I don't, own, don't owe anything in that musical work. Only then can you do the same kind of thing with getting a license. Hey, can I please have a license? Now I know who owns this stuff. Can I have a license from you? Can I have a license from you? Can I have a license from you? And hopefully you'll get a license back. But if we're going back to the, to the finding a share owner, um, we're, as I said, we are updating the standard at the moment. The main update we're dealing with is um, to allow central hubs to collect information about share ownerships. Um, it's, that means that the record company does not need to, or a DSP, does not need to go to every single publisher by itself, but they can simply ping the, the central uh, um, hub, and the hub then hopefully provides all the information because they have uh, collated that information from the publishers um, and can pl play that back makes the whole thing much more, more efficient. Still, the, the record company would a priori need to identify who the likely owners of the sound recording is to give this hub uh, a, a fighting chance to find out uh, where, whom to ask to confirm the share ownerships that, they, that the hub assumes exists. Um, and there are companies, or there's at least one company, um, Sound Exchange again, um, trying to... Um, set up or is planning to set up one of those hubs. So once you then have the license, you then need to um, maintain a license. And that can be two different things. Please, can you, pay, can you pay me from now on? Or can you please um, get a license? Or if you need further licenses, come to me from now on. The... Um, This is typically a, a, a very simple arrow there, which is not necessarily the way it will ha um, happen in, in real life. In, 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 you will most likely see several communications going on from the um, new the publisher that has just acquired the catalog to the company, to the record company or DSP. The record company DSP would then reach out to the old owner to say, can you please confirm that, and they will get a confirmation back. Having said that, we are at the moment in the process of actually defining how exactly that looks like. That's why I kept this diagram comparatively simply simple for this here. So this whole works notification licensing uh, supports quite a diverse set of choreographies. The first one where, where um, this set of standards was actually used, was here in Canada, as, 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 uh, um, uh, which was more or less mandated by a court settlement. Um, and it, it deals with license requests and grants for, for physical products. Um, and it, uh, uh, we're now looking at um, extending this, as I said, in, in, into um, the United States uh, for the communication of, of, of claims. Um, and the U.S. Letters of Direction, as I said, is in, in the work. Does that answer your question from um, you had earlier? I think what I'm curious about is, is you know, as a publisher, it's necessary that there's an intermediary because a lot of these services will not want to deal and it's not efficient to deal with um, directly each of the publishers because we all have different pictures of the information. Um, but us dealing with intermediaries, and they do do very good jobs here in Canada, thank you, um, it's, it's hard to check the homework everywhere around the world where we may own a right, um, but ultimately that's what I'm interested in doing in a digital era. I'm, I'm interested in saying 
you know, does Spotify have an accurate picture of my works? Does Apple Music have an accurate picture of my works? Does any other service have an ap accurate picture of our works? Um, and given the intermediaries, it's it's often really hard to do. And, and that's that's kind of what I'm interested in, is maybe there is that referential intermediate database where you as an owner are allowed to query and say, you know, what does that picture look like right now? So, you know, I appreciate that HFA or CMRA or any of the others may say, you know, I'm going to have to go to that prior administrator. But if the prior administrator is sluggish at responding because why do they care to confirm that they don't own that anymore? Maybe they're comfortable continuing to get paid and taking a rate. Um, I don't have the ability to know that. Similarly, if, if you know, they only ping the intermediary once every quarter, uh, they can continue to pay the wrong people. Um, so I, I'm curious about a live setup of checking because I think that possibility exists. And uh, I'd be interested in helping to facilitate or support development efforts towards that? There, there are efforts uh, um, in that respect. If we're looking at, uh, I, I certainly cannot speak on behalf of, of uh, uh, Sound Exchange's uh, hub that they are working on. However, my understanding is that there will be some kind of a console where publishers can actually look at um, and, and see what, um, what information they hold about this and they would send out to to record companies or other people who, who uh, inquire about shares. Now, that is US-centric. There are, um, hard to believe, but there are 200 other countries on this world. Um, and um, that, I do not think that that system will work with that. Now, um, in a lot of countries, you, you, you work under some kind of an umbrella uh, uh, um, or, or blanket licensing, licensing scheme um, where that the share ownership will be done post sales and usage using uh, um, some kind of a claim uh, mechanism. Um, and there are existing standards for that. DDEX is looking at uh, developing um, uh, a ubiquitous or, or, a, or, a, or a claim message that can be used uh, uh, throughout this, the industry um, at the moment. Um, some of the stuff will will actually be be dealt with more efficiently at that stage, but it's an it's an it's a problem in a market where you don't have any any central database that contains all the claims. Yes, and I, I I'd be happy if I had a silver bullet that would would uh, deal with all of those things, but um, I don't. The index, the, this this does, however. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about this now, and, and, but we can, of course, come back to that. It does actually um, talk to some extent about this, this linking between works and recordings, because what a, what, what a DSP sells and, and, and what they trade in are recordings or, or albums containing recordings. Um, and and the, the musical works are kind of bound into or wrapped into these sound recordings. So one of the crucial bits, and we've talked about that slightly earlier, is how do we establish links between recordings and, and musical works? How, how, can that be, um, how, that, how can that information be spread throughout the industry? Um, so how does a publisher know whom to pay? Um, because labels sense ERNs. They focus on releases. They focus on, on recordings. Um, but in many cases, publishers or society's first sight of a new product and a new release is actually in a, in a sales report. So when the society first sees sales reports, that's in that sales report, they find a link of tracks. Great. But what works are in that track? Wouldn't it be good that we have a mechanism to share that information um, as well? And the index is uh, in the process of finalizing one further tool uh, in, in its set of specifications, which is a message to communicate such links, where you can say that Mr. X claims that recording Y is based on work Z uh, or Z. Um, it doesn't claim any authority beyond saying, hey, it was Mr. X that said that, but there is no... no um, 
no formal authority linked associated with that link. It simply provides the ability for me to say, these are the links that I'm using, and here is, here is a message containing that. That specification is currently um, under, under development um, and hopefully will be, will be published in, in early next year is, I guess, um, what, I do, what I hope will be the timetable for that. Again, it doesn't directly solve your problem. I, I accept that. But it is one further tool that can help people get to the information from the, from the, from the various pieces of, of data that they have, have received. As a publisher, I received a sales report about a sound recording. Ah, but I got links from, from other people that told me what that sound recording is based on. So now I have a musical work. And that brings me um, full circle. That's basically the, 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 the full set of specifications or standards that DDEX um, currently supports from the studio right the way via record companies to online retailers and metadata companies back to the rights owners, whether they're works rights owners, uh, whether they're sound recording rights owners, um, plus then the, the ability to communicate to, um, to works licensors, information about licenses, and information down in yellow, which is not very well visible, uh, to music licensing companies um, and things in that area.